super flares from young red dwarf stars imperil planets. I have these images from NASA, but I also have images from live cameras like this one taken over New York City. No, sorry, well, it's a combination, it's a comp. On the left is the one from New York City. This one is over uh, Italy. And this one is a comp, uh, New York City on the left. You'll see it later on. And uh, so I've included some of the images, for example, over Mexico, uh, something of a light orb underneath the moon over New York City, and you'll see it. It's from uh, YouTube uh, uh, screenshots. And um, if you'd like to see the must-see video before this one, uh, it's the Leak Project uh, Creative Commons Reuse Allowed. You know, I don't steal people's videos. It's, we do post, though, Creative Commons videos because we have been given the authority to upload them uh, and that's they want it out there for our benefit uh, so we use it yes and there he has um, on him on his show a professional photographer who by chance noticed something around the sun and he's got various cameras and various uh, lenses with various filters that can take images even in the dark uh, so he explains what kind of images he took. He took them in um, uh, Louisiana, Dakotas, even uh, across the border into Canada, various locations, various times of the day and night. And uh, this is one of the Mexico, this is over Mexico that we're looking at right now. Uh, so I'm including this in this video as well because it's strange. NASA has also disclosed to us, confor confirmed to us, that we do have a brown dwarf star at the edge of our solar system, which is not pretty far away. It's just around Jupiter. So uh, I think it's important for us to have knowledge of, about what these things are. So this is on phys.org. Carl Heil, uh, it's dated October 18th, 2018. phys.org, I'll leave a link below for you. Super flares from young red dwarf stars in peril planets. And this is information, it's uh, an article by NASA Goodard Space Flight Center has provided this article. Now, uh, the word hazmat, H-A-Z-M-A-T, hazmat describes substances that pose a risk to the environment or even to life itself. Imagine the term being applied to entire planets where violent flares from the whole star may make worlds uninhabitable by affecting their atmospheres. These are the red dwarf stars. They're small stars that just have their, from their um, nucleus, they go right to radiation. In other words, their flares can take up the whole, uh, not the whole, but half, half of the star and uh, pound their nearby planets with uh, these tremendous flares and just, just about frying everything, uh, if it happened to have life, frying everything on that planet. I mean, life would therefore be impossible. So imagine the term being applied to entire planets where violent flares from the host star may make worlds uninhabitable by affecting their atmospheres. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope is observing such stars through the large program called HAZMAT, Habitable Zones of M Dwarf actively across time. M dwarf is the astronomical term for the red dwarf star. The smallest, most abundant, and longest lived type of star in our galaxy. The HAZMAT program is an ultraviolet survey of red dwarfs at three different ages, young, intermediate, and old. Stellar flares from red dwarfs are particularly bright in ultraviolet wavelengths compared with sun-like stars. Hubble's ultraviolet sensitivity makes the telescope very valuable for observing these flares. The flares are believed to be powered by intense magnetic fields that get tangled by the roiling motions of the stellar atmosphere. When the tangling gets too intense, the fields break and reconnect, unleashing tremendous amounts of energy. The team has found that the flares from the youngest red dwarfs they, they surveyed is about 40 million years old, are 100 to 1,000 times more energetic than when the stars are older. 
This younger age is when terrestrial planets are forming around their stars. Approximately three quarters of the stars in our galaxy are red dwarfs. Three quarters of the stars are red dwarfs. Most of the galaxy's habitable zone planets, planets orbiting their stars at a distance where temperatures are moderate enough for liquid water to exist on their surface, likely orbit red dwarfs. In fact, the nearest star to our sun, a red dwarf named Proxima Centauri, has an Earth-sized planet in its habitable zone. However, young red dwarfs are active stars, producing ultraviolet flares that blast out so much energy that they could influence atmospheric chemistry and possibly strip off the atmospheres of these fledgling planets. It's assumed that uh, this is what happened to Mercury. If it had a direct hit by a, a, a CME, it could have uh, uh, downgraded or uh, blown away its uh, magnetosphere to the point that cosmic rays destroyed the atmosphere and life on Mars. Now, is going on with this article, the goal of the HAZMAT program is to help understand the habitability of planets around low-mass stars, explained Arizona State University's Evgenia Shkolkin, the program's principal investigator. Quote, these low-mass stars are critically important in understanding planetary atmospheres. The results of the first part of this Hubble program are being published in the Astrophysical Journal. This study examines the flare frequency of 12 young red dwarfs. Quote, getting these data on the young stars has been especially important because the difference in their flare activity is quite large as compared to the older stars, said Arizona State University's Park Lloyd, the first author on this paper. The observing program detected one of the most intense stellar flares ever observed in ultraviolet light, dubbed the haze flare. This event was more energetic than the most powerful flare from our sun ever recorded. You see how powerful it is then. With the sun, they say, we have a hundred years of good observations, Lloyd said, and in that time we've seen one, maybe two flares that have an energy approaching that of the haze flare. In a little less than a day's worth of Hubble observations of these young stars, we caught the Hatz flare, which means that we're looking at super flares happening every single day, or even a few times a day, end quote. Could super flares of such frequency and intensity bathe young planets in so much ultraviolet radiation that they forever doom chances of habitability? Well, according to Lloyd, quote, flares like we observe have the capacity to strip away the atmosphere from the planet. But that does not necessarily mean doom and gloom for life on the planet. It just might be different life than we imagine. Or there might be other processes that could replenish the atmosphere of the planet. It's certainly a harsh environment, but I would hesitate to say that it is a sterile environment." End quote. The next part of the HAZMAT study will be to study intermediate aged red dwarfs that are 650 million years old then the oldest red dwarfs will be analyzed and compared to the young and the intermediate stars to understand the evolution of the ultraviolet radiation environment of low-mass planets around these low-mass stars. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. 
in Capotá. We also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.